Hey, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did. And if you aren't from America, I hope you had a wonderful random weekend in November. Today, I'm going to talk about time travel. Time travel has been a major science fiction component in our culture since the authorship of The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And it's been postulated about in many different ways by many different people. You've got entire movie series based around time travel. You've got people talking about it in relations to physics, people talking about it in relations to philosophy, people talking about time travel in relations to even biology. However, I've never heard anybody consider the linguistic implications of time travel. So today I'm going to tell you why, linguistically, traveling through time would be difficult at best and stupid at worst. So a major part of becoming a chrononaut, if you're going to go back in time and talk to people, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I could go back in time and talk to, insert historical character here, Henry VIII, Julius Caesar, Sargon of Akkad, you know, people who did big things, but like, I wish we knew more about them. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, any of those people. I doubt that anyone will ever be able to do that even if we invented time travel. Because being able to communicate with those people would take a very, very long time. Let me elaborate. Let's think about how we know how people spoke in the past, right? We don't have recordings of people talking more than 200 years ago, generously. So the only way that we can even begin to decipher how languages used to sound is through reconstruction from looking at the written language. And with some languages, like Latin and Hebrew, I think we've done a great job. But is that perfect? Could somebody who studies Latin today actually go back in time and talk to a random Roman citizen. I'm skeptical. They might be able to talk to Roman scholars, or people who were well-versed in their language, and educated, and wrote about how the language sounded, and spoke in a proper way. But even with today's languages, you can see there's a lot of variation in dialect, and I don't think that that can be captured efficiently in written language. And that means reconstructions are never going to be perfect. Written language cannot accurately portray spoken language. So... I'm going to forecast that if time travel were to be invented, depending on the language and depending on the languages that you already know and how long you've spent, I'd say you have about a two or three hundred year window back where you would be able to talk to the people. Anything beyond that, you might be getting into funky territory where like, you can do your best in your own time to learn whatever language, but I don't think it would be perfect. And I think that you would have trouble communicating. The remedy to this is spending more time in the past and learning the language by being immersed. But that comes into the problem of, do you tell people you're a time traveler? Or would they just call you a witch and kill you, depending on what society you're dealing with? I don't know, that's hard to say. Then you get into anthropology. And that only covers half of time travel, the other half being time travel to the future. Because that's what everybody wants to do with it, right? Go to the future, see what they have, bring it back, it'll advance us. Well, how are you going to talk to them? How are you going to understand what they're saying about their technology? Because you're not going to be able to just look at it and know what it is. Imagine trying to reconstruct a future language. 
You can't do that. People try to do that, but that's just gambling without money or odds. You can't guess how a language is going to change in the future. Now, I will say that a society like Western society that has standardized language education, we can... I kind of have this idea today that a lot of the English world, the vocabulary is homogenizing. So I feel like even just two generations ago, people from Australia, people from England, and people from America spoke more differently than they do now. And that's because of technology and education. And if technology and education continue to solidify what English sounds like, you probably have a good chance of going to the future and communicating effectively with other people. But if our society collapses for whatever reason, and there's a breakdown of that communication, I would say you have it a hundred years at best where you could go to the future and still talk to the people and make sense. Anything past that and you're suddenly speaking Middle English. I know that's not actually how old Middle English is. I know old Middle English is older than 100 years ago, but I feel like that um, change in dialect, the change in the language as it changes throughout time, I know I said change a million times there, forgive me, would make it nearly impossible to go to the future and communicate effectively. So to wrap it all up, I don't think that in a linguistic sense time traveling in order to talk to other people is a very viable thing to do. I think if you were to try to go back before humans and observe the natural world, that's one thing. And you could do that, and obviously, since there's no people, you don't have to worry about communicating. But if you want to go back and see historical events and talk to people who were there, or go in the future and see how technology advances, how our decisions now affect them. I don't think that that would be an easy thing to do, and I also don't even know if it's possible. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.